Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a pinafore dress for a stuffed animal. I got a request for this on Instagram, and I'd actually never heard of it, but it's kind of an old style dress that Build-A-Bear used to sell, but now doesn't. It's pretty much a dress that ties in the back like an apron, and I thought it was really cute. Now let's get started. The first thing I'm grabbing is my fabric. I chose this yellow one with roses since it felt kind of vintage to me, and I thought it would just go well with the style of dress. I also used some pins and these patterns I made. Like always, I'll have them linked in the description box. Okay, so the first thing I do is of course cut out my pieces. I'm going to be using my rotary cutter and mat for this, but you can use scissors. And I recently discovered that it comes with this kind of big plastic ruler to help me cut straight lines. I'm going to cut out the skirt piece first, and it's just this really big rectangle. Since this piece is supposed to be really long, I actually just cut out a half pattern. So the final piece I want should be double this size. I'm just going to cut as long of a continuous piece as I can with the amount of fabric I have. And since my fabric was too short, I'm just going to fold over however much pattern I didn't cover yet and cut that out as a separate piece. Next, I'm going to do the thicker back straps. And since I need two of these, I'm just going to fold over my fabric first and then cut it out so I have two. Then I'm going to do the little trapezoid for the top. And I'm going to do the thinner straps a little differently, so I'll do that later. Now that most of my pieces are cut out, I still need to sew those two skirt pieces together to make the full piece, so I already did that. And I did a little zigzag stitch along the edge to help with the fraying. I'm actually going to set that aside though because I'm going to work on the top piece first. The first thing I do is hem along the top and side edges. I'm just folding each edge over once. Then I can pin that in place and sew a straight stitch along the entire top edge. After that, it should look like this. Now the edges are nice and clean. Now I'm going to get back to those thinner straps that I mentioned earlier. And instead of cutting this out first, I'm going to trace around where I want to sew, and then just sew following the lines I drew. So I'm first taking my fabric and folding it over good side to good side. Then I'm placing my thin strap pattern right along that folded edge, and just tracing around the entire thing. The reason I'm doing this connected to the fabric and not cutting it out first is just in case I sewed too close to the edge, I didn't want the fabric to get sucked into the sewing machine, which can be a problem when you're working with really small clothes like this, but I later realized this wasn't really necessary because there's no need to sew that close to the edge, so if you want to cut this and sew it the normal way, I'll also have a pattern for that version. But after sewing along the line I drew, it should look like this, and I can cut it out. I also forgot to mention, make sure the bottom is still open. Now here comes what can be the trickiest part, which is turning this inside out. The method I like is to first start by turning inside out the closed end, which I know can be really hard because usually you're turning inside out the open end, but once you have it kind of turned inside out, there should be a little pocket that forms, and that's where you could stick in a wooden dowel or the end of a paintbrush or a pencil, and then start to pull the fabric down and around it. It'll be tougher to do this the more fabric you've pulled down, but once you're able to see the closed end poking through, you can remove the dowel and just pull the rest of the fabric down around it. And that's the best method I have for turning something like this inside out. I prefer this method of making straps so I don't have to hem along both edges and the strap looks nice and clean from both sides. Now I need to make one more of these and I'm going to iron them flat. Here's what they looked like when I was done. I didn't get all the wrinkles out, but when you tie them you don't really notice. Next I'm going to sew these to the top piece of the dress. I'm first trying to tuck in those raw edges to make things cleaner, but it's not necessary. And you can use a sewing machine for this, but I just went in with a needle and thread and tried to sew in a straight line along the top to attach the straps. I also tried to match the stitches with the stitches from the hem so they're not too obvious, but not sure if I was successful at that. Once it's pretty secure, to lock the end of my thread, I'm inserting my needle through one of the stitches, and before that loop closes, I'm inserting my needle through there, and that'll lock the stitch. I just need to do that one more time to make a double knot. After sewing on the other strap, it looked like this, and now I'm going to move on to the thicker straps. The pattern for the thicker straps are just these really long rectangles, and the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half good side to good side, and pin that together. And starting from that folded edge, I'm going to sew down and around the corner, but instead of sewing all the way down, I'm going to stop about 5 inches from the end. I know I'm showing the exact measurement with a ruler, but I can't remember how I actually kept track of this point and stopped there. I probably just measured it as I was sewing, but it doesn't have to be precise. You can just stop with about four to five inches left. After that, as you can see, this end part is still open, but now I need to turn it inside out. I'm using the same method I just used, 
and this time this should be easier since the piece is wider. I need to do this one more time for the other strap, but once I have that, I can sew this on to the top of the dress. I need to match up the open ends of these straps with the sides of the main piece, and I'm making sure they're good side to good side and the open edge is pointed down. So they should end up overlapping each other like this. Now I can use a straight stitch to sew where I've pinned. After that, we have the top half of our dress done, but now we need to make the skirt. I'm grabbing that big rectangle from the beginning, and the first thing I'm going to do is hem all along the bottom edge, and for some reason I forgot to do this, but you'll also want to hem the side edges as well. I just did that later when I finally remembered. To hem this, I'm folding the edge over twice, since I wanted to be extra neat when making this skirt, but as you'll see later, I kind of messed that up. <laughs> After hemming that bottom edge, I next need to sew a straight stitch right along the top of this, but I'm going to make sure to not lock my stitch in the beginning so I won't be doing a back stitch with my sewing machine. You just want to do this for one end. If I were to do this again though, I'd fold over this top edge first, since when I eventually gathered the material, the fabric started fraying a lot. So folding over the edge first would definitely prevent that. After sewing along the top there, I'm going to grab one of the threads at the end that I didn't lock, and just start lightly pulling on it until the fabric starts to gather. As the fabric gathers, you want to just keep scooting the ruffles towards the other end to even them out. For some reason this time, this was really hard to do, and since I didn't fold over that top edge, the fabric frayed a lot, but luckily the thread didn't get pulled out or anything, so I just kept ruffling it. I'm going to keep pulling on this thread till the top edge is only about 16 inches, and that's because that's the measurement around my stuffed animal's waist. Plus, you might want to add a little extra so it overlaps in the back. After I've measured it to the right length, I'm going to take that thread I was pulling and tie it in a knot with that second thread that I didn't pull, and that'll lock things in place so the skirt doesn't change lengths. You can still move the ruffles around to make them more even, so that's what I'm going to do before sewing this to the top. After I have the skirt looking the way I want it to, I can pin on that top piece good side to good side, and you really want to get this as centered as possible so the straps are the same length. As you can see, by sewing together the raw edges, those will be tucked inside and you won't see them. And hopefully by the time you get to the end of the skirt, you'll have already gotten to the closed side of the strap. I'm going to keep pinning this all the way to the other side, and then use a straight stitch to sew this all together. After that, I can flip the top up, and the dress is pretty much finished! I of course just now noticed that I forgot to hem the sides of the skirt, so I had to do that real quick. In addition to that, I did a zigzag stitch where I sewed together the top and skirt, since that edge was just really really frayed. But it didn't really make that big of a difference, so next time I'd recommend just making sure to fold over the top of that skirt. And now it is ready to try on. This will fit a Build-A-Bear or any similarly sized stuffed animal, and as you saw in the intro, I was able to put this on my mini pillow pet too. I'm just tying the thin straps around her neck to make a bow, and same for the skirt. And here you can overlap the sides of the skirt so they don't have a big opening. I'm honestly really impressed with myself that I got these straps to the right length, because there's definitely a danger of making them too short, but I think they ended up being the perfect length. I really hope you enjoyed this video, Please give it a like, comment any video suggestions you have, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Feel free to DM me on Instagram at LixiePig if you want to show things you've made or just talk. I'll see you next time! Bye!